Welcome to a CST8216 Processor Architecture Hybrid Lecture. Today's topic is calculating voltage, resistance, current, and power in simple series circuits. First of all, let's review the fundamental relationships in any circuit. Voltage is defined as a potential difference between two points. Current is defined as the movement of charge. And finally, resistance is defined as the opposition to current. If you build a circuit like this in multi-SIM, however, I would like to point out an important note. This circuit, as it is, will not function. Rather, you will get an error message because you have forgot to put in a ground. In order to correct this then, what we have to do is put a ground in the circuit. And it's your choice where to put it. You could put a single ground and have all the interconnecting wiring attached to that ground, or you could put individual grounds, one below the battery and one below the last series component. Either way, you won't run into that error message you just saw in Multisim. Let's look at the definition of a series circuit. Two elements are said to be in series if both of the following conditions are met. They are connected at a single point, such as R1 is connected at a single point on the left and a single point on the right, and there are no other current carrying connections at this point. So there is only one source of current through R1, only one source of current through R2. Let's start off by calculating the voltage, current, and resistance. Here's our circuit, and what I'd like to point out here is that the total voltage in this case is simply going to be the battery voltage. The same current I is going to flow through both R1 and R2, and it's going to be the same current because there's only one path for the current to take in this simple series circuit, and that's from the positive terminal of the battery through the two resistors and back around to the negative terminal of the battery. Let's begin our calculations. The very first thing I'm going to have to do is take the battery out of the circuit and calculate the total resistance. Here I've got R1 and R2, but those are individual resistances within the circuit. And in order for me to calculate the total current, then what I'm going to have to do is find out first of all what the total voltage is which we already discovered just to be the battery voltage but I have to also calculate the total resistance in order to get the total current so let's take a look at and see how we do this to calculate the total resistance I'm going to look into the circuit and that's why I've drawn this arrow here with RT so that I'm looking into this circuit at both of these terminals. In a series circuit, the total resistance is the summation of all the resistances. So therefore, in this case, we've got the total resistance is equal to R1 plus R2. Note that I've got the subscript T, which stands for total in this case, and I'm identifying the individual resistors by putting their subscripts here as well. R1 and R2. So the total resistance in this circuit is 4.0 kilo ohms. Let's do a quick check just to make sure that you've grasped this concept of total resistance. Calculate total resistance in this circuit before you go on to the next slide. If you never got 50 ohms, then you should recalculate the values again and if you still don't get 50 ohms go back a couple of slides and just look at the theory on total resistance again. Coming back to our original circuit we found that the total resistance was 4 kilo ohms so what I'm actually going to do now is I'm going to draw an equivalent circuit because I want to relate the total voltage, the total resistance, and the total current together. So that's why I put in these subscripts of T, T for total. I found out that the total resistance was 4K ohms. So I'm going to draw that equivalent circuit here to show my battery, show the path of the total current in the circuit, and this equivalent 
value of RT of 4 K ohms. So using Ohm's law, I'm going to say that the total current is equal to total voltage divided by the total resistance. And in this case, it's 12 volts divided by 4.0 K ohms, and that's going to give me an IT of 3 milliamps. And one of the important things you should note here is how I went from volts divided by K ohms, and I got milliamps. I would suggest you look at what power of 10 the K stands for and what power of 10 the M stands for. What I want to do next is calculate the voltage drops across each of the resistors and we're going to find out that the voltage drops across each of those resistors should equal the source. So I can do that by using Ohm's law once again and I'm going to say that the voltage across R1 is equal to the total current times the value of R1. So that'll be 3 milliamps times 2.0 K ohms and that's going to give me 6 volts for the voltage across R1. Because R1 and R2 are equal values then I would expect that the voltage drop across both of those resistors is identical because both of the resistor values offer exactly the same resistance to current flow. We can prove that by saying that VR2 is equal to IT times R2, and the same calculation occurs because it's the same current as through R1. The value of the resistor is the same, and therefore I get 6 volts as VR2. What I wanted to do here was just prove that the voltage drops across both of these resistors equaled the supplied voltage. And there's a formal name for this, and that's Kirchhoff's voltage law. And Kirchhoff said that the summation of the voltages for any closed loop is equal to zero. Or we can look at that in another way, is that the summation of the voltage rises, or the supplied voltage, has to be equal to the summation of the voltage drops across each of the components for a closed loop. So one way of writing this in a general equation is that the supplied voltage minus any of the voltage drops is equal to zero. And another way of writing this is that the supplied voltage is equal to the summation of the voltage drops by putting those on the right hand side of the equation. This is the general form of the equations because in this particular diagram I don't have three voltage drops so I just wanted to point that out. Now we want to calculate the power in a series circuit. To do so I'm going to use the power formulas. And in general the power formulas are power is equal to voltage times current, power is equal to current squared times the resistance, or power is equal to voltage squared divided by the resistance. And because energy must be conserved, then we're going to find out that the circuit's total power, PT, is equal to the power dissipated by component 1 plus the power dissipated by component 2 plus plus plus, and finally to the power dissipated by the nth element in the circuit. The last thing I'd like to mention on this slide is that the unit of measurement of power is the watt. Back to our original circuit here, we can calculate the total power by using this formula here. The total power is equal to the total voltage times the total current. So looking at the circuit, we have the total voltage equal to 12 volts. We previously calculated what the total current was, so I'll put that in the formula here, and I end up with the total power in this circuit is equal to 36 milliwatts. Another way I could do this is using the total power is equal to the total current squared times the total resistance, and these calculations are here. You'll note that regardless of which form of the formula I use, I should always end up with the same answer. And that's a quick check to find out whether or not you have other calculations correct as well. Here's another form of the power formula where I look at the total power is equal to the total voltage squared divided by the total resistance. And once again I get the value of 36 milliwatts which is 
exactly the same as the other two calculations. Finally, I'm going to just show how I can once again confirm my work because the summation of the power drops within the circuit has to be equal to the supplied power. So the total power is equal to the power dissipated by R1 plus the power dissipated by R2. I'm going to have this formula here and I'm going to end up with once again 36 milliwatts.